Yes, today we're gonna to be going over the best saving accounts in Australia. Just to avoid any confusion, no, we're not gonna be talking about the big four banks today. Why? Because their products are utter dog shit. We're talking 4.75, 4.75, 4.75, and ANZ coming in with a random 4.65. This is quite a clear indication of just them trying to set the market and understand that they are just doing this for their own profit and aren't looking out for the Australian consumer. Now, why would you wanna change your savings account? It's quite simple. Why would you not want to earn free money? That is all you're doing right now. By transferring your money from one bank account to another with a better interest rating, saving you money in the long run. So that is why we're gonna go on with the criteria for these other bank accounts that we're looking into and what they need to meet in order to be considered. Now the criteria we're gonna go over today is availability to the Australian consumer, which all banks these days are pretty available and pretty accessible. We're also gonna be going over the length of term of the introductory rate because normally a bank account will just give you an introduction rate with a bonus rate on top to act like they're doing you a favor but at the end of the day they're just trying to sell you a product included in this criteria is also all bank accounts must be insured by the australian government covered under the financial claims scheme what this scheme does is essentially all your money all the way up to a combined value of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, is insured by the australian government now standard feature amongst these bank accounts is the introductory rate doesn't come for free it has to come with the criteria that you deposit a thousand dollars and do five individual transactions from this account month to month in order to be eligible for these bonus rates that allow you to get such high interest rate returns on your account. This can be as simple as paying for your everyday groceries and going to the service station. Nothing too fancy, just get those five transaction fees and then you're done. You also need to be continuously topping up these accounts in order to be eligible for these bonus rates. Now the first account that we're gonna be talking about today is the HSBC account. This comes in at an introductory rate for three months at 5.15% per annum. Now this is nowhere near the best account that we're gonna to see today, but as you can already see with a 0.3% increase over the standard four banks, this is nothing to shy away from when you expand it out to let's stay on the standard area rate of $10,000. Though I understand that this can be unrealistic for some people and this could be a little bit low for some people. So I'm trying to find a happy medium between people and also just an easy round number to get the math across. So at 0.3% of a difference, you're gonna be looking at on average about a $30 difference per year on these accounts. Now the next two bank accounts come in at the exact same introductory rate of 5.5%. This will be ING and Bank of Queensland. Now as you can see, we're now making our way into the more meaningful differences between the big four banks and what fellow competitors in the field can offer to the everyday Australian consumer. But now the spread difference between of 0.75%, or if we wanna see it from the perspective of our base investment of $10,000, a $75 difference for just having a separate account in a different bank and just changing your money from one place to another, $75 in your pocket, nothing more, nothing less. Now the one coming out in front of this list is Macquarie Bank, coming in with a leading rate of 5.55%. Now this isn't a massive difference between the other threes, but as you can see, you don't need to stick with the big four to get the best rate. The big four aren't in your best interest. Yes, they are a staple to the Australian economy and the massive cornerstone of the banking industry within Australia, but they are never ever going to be looking out for the Australian consumer's interest utmost and foremost. At the end of the day, they are a bank and they are looking to make a profit in order to improve their foothold in the market whilst also increasing their approval ratings with their shareholders. Now this final rate gives us a spread difference of 0.80%. Or in other terms, this is $80 difference. Now you're probably trying to figure out why the hell am I still talking about this dollar rate ratio when it's only $80. Yes, $80 can make a massive difference to some people, $80 could mean nothing to other people. But at the end of the day, if I told you for an hour's worth of work, you could earn $80, would you not take that job regardless by just earning the extra $80 an hour or 75 or $30? By just doing 30 minutes worth of work, you're gonna receive a great deal of benefits from just changing from one bank account to another. This isn't a drastic difference. This isn't even a lot of effort, but in the long run with inflation and just overall common sense, 
Would you not rather make the change and save yourself the money instead of just leaving your money in the bank and lining the inner pockets of the big four banks with their lower interest rates, which in the long run, they end up profiting off because they use your deposited money in order to make further investments of your money. Now, in no way am I a financial advisor. I do all this for educational and entertainment purposes only. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with keeping your money in the big four banks, but it also helps to understand that there are other options out there that are gonna be better for you that have your best interests in hand.